And this video is a practice on using color through the Adobe Color Creator and, and it teaches you how to create um, color swatches based on specific color combinations and schemes. So um, you can access the Adobe Color in one of two ways. Um, the last slide in the color slides that I've provided this week have a link to the Color Adobe, um, or you can punch in um, color.adobe.com and it will lead to the Color uh, CC page. You can also sign in uh, using your account if you're not already signed in, and you can save these swatches uh, to your account or to your cloud so you can access them easily when you are using them in InDesign. And for this assignment, we're going to go into Adobe Color. We're going to create desirable color schemes and mock those swatches and lay them out in an InDesign document. So we are going to use our color picker in the InDesign document and uh, make sure those codes are identical. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, I've got Adobe Color pulled up here. And you've got, if you look under um, your color rule, you've got the different types of color um, schemes here and we've got several to choose from you can even create custom ones um, the main ones we're concerned with with the practice are analogous monochromatic and complementary um, triad is almost is similar it's um, equally spaced in a equilateral triangle on the color wheel um, then you have compound which is basically like complementary but then you've got uh, shades of color on either side of that complement and of course shades you've got one color family and darker shades of that color as well as you can create custom there and in order to create your colors all you have to do is um, you have your spectrum and your color gamut here um, you can move these around you can space them out they're always going to be side by side in this case since it's analogous um, or adjacent to one another. If you move the middle one, it's going to move the whole group around and you can create lighter tints, you can create darker shades. Um, and so just find a desirable, oops, find a desirable match <clears throat> to what you are wanting to create here. And when you get to that point and when you get the colors that you would like um, here, then you are going to punch in um, and look at these codes. So when you select the swatches, it's going to give you five swatches uh, for that color combination. And when you click on that, it's got the ratio um, for the different colors based on your different color modes. So here we have our CMYK code that for we use for printing. Um, if we were using this on the web, we would use RGB color mode. Lab color is when we are also printing, but that's when we are using specific types of printers. And hue, saturation, and brightness, that's also a code that you can modify and select color with. And then at the bottom is your hexadecimal code. That's color that is... Um, equated down to the hexadecimal level. Um, so all colors have a hexadecimal code and usually those start with a hashtag or in your color picker it looks like a hashtag. So <clears throat> what you're going to do is go into the color or Adobe color. You're going to go to those individual um, color schemes and select desirable um, color swatch combinations. Just make sure that each color swatch has enough contrast to differentiate from another. And uh, once, you've picked, once you have picked those desirable colors, then we're going to create a layout in InDesign in which we are matching those colors. So on the InDesign document, which I've started here, um, I've basically taken the first colors that I created, which they're not really here anymore. I've got something similar here 
but I created a text box. We're going to include your name, the, the class, and the practice. Um, I do want you to create a header for each of the schemes. So you'll have three schemes, analogous, complementary, and monochromatic. And under each of those schemes, you'll have five color swatches like in the creator. And underneath that, I'm going to create another text box that shows my codes. I've got my CMYK code here, my RGB, my lab, my hue, saturation, and brightness, and my hexadecimal code. Um, so what I have done here, you're just going to replicate. And once you've done it once, um, you can select those elements. This will save you time in your layout. And just for fun, I use round swatches. You can use square or whatever um, object shape you want. You can use a polygon even if you would like. Um, but I thought it would be fun to try some round swatches this time. Um, so I'm going to go back to my selection tool. And I'm just going to select all of this. You can either click and drag over all of the items here, or you can select one, hold down the shift key, and click on all of your objects to select them all. And I'm going to duplicate and move this. You can either do that one of two ways. You can do Command C and copy, and then click elsewhere and Command V to paste. Or a shorter way to go about this is once you have it selected, hold down your option key and you notice my cursor changes and it looks double. That means it's going to duplicate and let me move at the same time. So I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to move it down here. And I'm just going to replicate this but change up the information. So now I've got everything typed in. Um, now all I have to do is adjust the information. So on this one I'm going to make my text box bigger to hold the word monochromatic since it's a little bigger. Um, on this I'm just going to empty all of my cells for the moment or all my objects. So I'm going to go up here to my swatch and I'm going to do away with the color here on both of these. You can select all of them and do that at once. And I'm going to go back over here. So now I'm ready to create a um, monochromatic color scheme. So I am going to select monochromatic here. And I'm going to move this around to select a monochromatic scheme that I like. And you can kind of create more contrast between the different shades of color. This is really nice with the different levels of cool blues and blue violets. So I will use this. And this first one here, here I have my codes. So I'm going to minimize this again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and I'm going to go ahead and type in my codes first to my box here and once I've done that now I can fill this box or this object with that code and I'm going to go ahead and do my RGB codes my lab my hue, saturation, and brightness, and my hexadecimal code. So <clears throat> then I'm going to go back to my selection tool, select the object. Now when you select the arrow to fill, you get your swatches, but if you double click on the box itself, you get your color picker. And in this color picker, that is where you will punch in your codes here. So for this swatch here, I'm doing the CMYK number here. So I'm going to punch that in, 70, 93, 0, and then 50. 
And I'm going to go ahead and add it as a swatch. It will be in my swatch list now. And, but I also have it as um, a fill. So it automatically fills it with that swatch. Now notice even in these two, even though it's Adobe, and we're using both Adobe applications here, this is through Safari on the website. This is in the actual app, um, the InDesign app. And you can see how these two colors are identical in terms of their code, but from you know platform to platform they look a little different. So keep in mind um, when using color on a computer um, your monitor is always going to lie to you a little bit. It never will look the exact same when printed either. So you always have to try and work towards getting as close to a match as you possibly can. Um, so say if it's a blue that has a lot of magenta in it, it may turn out purple when you try and print it. Um, our Ole Miss Blue does that um, and is notorious for that. So, so you'll go through each of these. When I click on the next swatch, it gives me that information, and I will do the same thing for each one of these swatches. And when I get ready to do my... Um, Complementary, I will do the exact same thing. So I will click and drag all my information. You can go about this however you want to, that's comfortable for you in terms of creating your objects and filling them with color and then your text boxes with all your codes. Um, but <clears throat> I find it easier and more efficient to create it once and then copy and paste or duplicate and move all of those elements and just fill in with a different number and color. So for your assignment and your practice, that's what you're going to do. You're going to create three schemes, five swatches each, so there will be 15 swatches total, and then you will package it, compress it, and submit your InDesign file to Box um, in the designated section folder. And just remember to have your name on it and um, that is it. Just make sure that your file name is as you know instructed, um, last name first, underscore, then the project title. In this case, it's color practice. Um, if you print out your um, final printout, um, you will need to print from your PDF, so don't forget that, okay? So I'm going to leave you to it, and good luck with the practice, and if you have questions, let me know.